In my last video, I showed you the whole procedure of sheath cleaning for geldings and I had lots of different messages and comments asking why it needed to be done because horses in the wild don't have procedures like that done. This comment in particular really stood out to me and I thought, what a great idea for a video comparing the lives of wild horses to their domesticated cousins. And then I could answer loads of the questions that were put forward to me. And that way I could really help to clear up some of the misconceptions. So come with me on this journey into the world of horses, from hoof health to overall well-being. Let's dive into what makes these magnificent animals so incredibly unique and how their different lifestyles really do shape their lives. So I'm going to break this video down into seven different sections and the first is going to be all about hoof care. Wild horses roam vast areas, naturally wearing down their hooves as they travel across rocky grounds and soft soils. This constant movement keeps their hooves trimmed and really healthy, but it's not always perfect. Wild horses can suffer from hoof injuries that, without intervention, can lead to severe problems. These injuries might occur from sharp rocks or uneven ground. And without proper care, that can lead to lameness or even death. Whereas domesticated horses have the benefit of a regular farrier visit, who always makes sure that their hoof is balanced and trimmed and looking smart. This service really is a luxury for a horse and the procedure should be carried out every six to eight weeks. A horse's feet has to be trimmed in order to prevent overgrowth or uneven wear. Horses that work on hard surfaces often get fitted with shoes for additional protection. This routine care helps prevent many issues that wild horses face, ensuring healthier hooves and fewer injuries. With professional care, issues like cracks, abscesses and infections can be treated promptly which prevents long-term damage. Obviously, having shoes on your horses can cause its own set of problems. So look out for my video on comparing barefoot horses to horses that have been shod. While wild horses naturally maintain their hooves, they face greater risks of untreated injuries. Domesticated horses benefit from the professional care, ensuring healthier hooves despite sometimes weaker genetics. The care they receive allows them to avoid many of the common problems that can afflict wild horses. Horses in the wild, when they're unfortunate enough to get an abscess, can't have a nice poultice put on there to draw the poison out. Instead, they have to blow out of their coronet band, which can cause severe lameness. And then they are in danger of being taken by a predator. So section two is all about veterinary care and wild horses just don't have the luxury. Injuries and diseases can often be fatal if untreated. Nature is ruthless and only the very strongest horses survive. A serious injury can mean the difference between life and death for a wild horse. They have absolutely no access to surgeries, injections or advanced treatments. If a wild horse falls ill or gets injured, it must rely on its natural resilience and the healing power of time, which is not always enough. In contrast, domesticated horses receive the most comprehensive veterinary care. They get regular checkups, vaccinations and can undergo surgeries when necessary. Injections for various conditions, treatments for wounds and preventative care are all part of their domesticated life. This access to modern medicine ensures they recover from injuries that would otherwise have been fatal in the wild. Regular veterinary care helps catch and treat issues early, providing domesticated horses with a safety net that wild horses lack. Also, we see our horses on such a regular basis and we get to know their little quirks. So the slightest little thing and we're going to notice it. 
We notice when they're slightly lame. We notice when they've suddenly gone quiet. All of these things are such a major advantage for domesticated horses. While wild horses rely on their natural resilience, domesticated horses lead longer, healthier lives. This level of care helps domesticated horses avoid the many health pitfalls that can befall their wild counterparts. So section three is all about health care and wild horses take care of all their health issues through natural behaviours. They groom each other to maintain hygiene and rely on natural movements to stay healthy. However, they miss out on specific health practices like sheath cleaning and thorough grooming that a domesticated horse receives on a regular basis. In the wild, horses deal with parasites and pests through mutual grooming, rolling in dirt, but this can only do so much. Domesticated horses enjoy regular grooming sessions from their human caregivers, and this includes brushing, bathing and sheath cleaning for male horses to prevent infections. They also live in clean stables and reduce the risks of diseases and parasites. Regular grooming also helps detect any health issues really early on. Clean, well-maintained environments ensure that domesticated horses are less likely to suffer from skin conditions or infections. Many horse owners have had to deal with skin conditions such as sarcoids, for instance, where we have to use Liverpool cream in order to remove them or have them lasered off. Obviously, if a horse in the wild had such a condition, there's no one to treat that, no one to help them. While wild horses do manage their own health care through natural behaviours, domesticated horses benefit so much from detailed and consistent human care and it ensures that they stay clean and healthy. This care extends their lives and improves their quality of life significantly. I'm quite sure that's how I've ended up with a 44-year-old pony. So, section four is all about dental care. Now, horses in the wild naturally wear down their teeth as they graze on tough, fibrous plants. This constant chewing helps to manage the tooth growth, but it doesn't address problems like overgrowth of teeth or the presence of wolf teeth, which can cause a lot of discomfort and feeding issues. Wild horses don't get dental checkups, so dental problems can go unnoticed until they are severely impacting the horse's health. If the horse can't eat, then it can't look after itself. It can't put body condition on so it will eventually end in death. Domesticated horses receive regular dental care to ensure that their mouths stay super healthy. This includes floating of their teeth, which involves filing down any overgrowth and removing any problematic wolf teeth or hooks. Such care ensures that they can chew their food properly and avoids dental pain or malnutrition. Dental issues like sharp points or uneven wear are managed effectively and quickly with regular care. This really does improve the horse's overall well-being and proactive care helps prevent the pain and complications that can arise from untreated dental problems. Section five is all about food and nutrition. Now, wild horses have to eat literally whatever they can find, and that changes with each season. So during the harsh winters and dry seasons, they might struggle to find enough food. This scarcity can lead to malnutrition and affect their overall health and survival. Their diet depends completely and solely on the natural ability to forage, which can be unpredictable and insufficient at times, especially if they have gotten an injury like something that we've spoken about earlier in this video. Domesticated horses, on the other hand, have a steady year-round supply of food and it's good quality food. They are fed a balanced diet of hay, different grains and supplements that they need to ensure they get all the necessary nutrients. 
special supplements like those for joint health can also be included to address specific needs. This consistent and balanced diet supports their overall health and prevents issues related to poor nutrition. Domesticated horses also have regular access to fresh water, which is crucial for their health. Unlike wild horses that may struggle to find clean, fresh water sources. So section six is all about exercise and movement. Now, obviously, horses in the wild travel for so many miles a day they are constantly having to move over terrain and move from one area to the other to make sure they've got enough food and enough water this constant movement keeps them fit and promotes healthy blood circulation it also helps wear down their hooves and keeps their muscles super strong the vast open spaces they live in allows them to engage in natural behaviours and maintain their physical fitness. Domesticated horses, however, often have less space to roam, but they still get regular exercise through riding, turnout in paddocks and training sessions. Structured exercise routines help maintain their fitness and prevent boredom and keeps them mentally stimulated. Owners ensure that their horses get enough physical activity to stay healthy and happy. However, and this is a big thing, some stabled horses do not get enough exercise and they do not get enough outdoor time. This can then lead to potential health issues like muscle atrophy, obesity and behavioural problems. While wild horses benefit from natural continuous movement, Domesticated horses do get a very structured exercise program that helps maintain their physical health and mental well-being, despite having less space to roam freely. I don't know about you, but me personally, I think I prefer to be out in the wild doing my own thing than being cooped up constantly in a few acres field with fencing all the way around it. So I really want you to think about that when you're taking your horse out and make sure that you take them to some really interesting places and different places to ride, just so they're more stimulated. Section seven is seasonal care. Now, wild horses grow really thick winter coats in the colder seasons. These thick coats protect them from the cold and wet conditions. This natural adaptation helps them to survive harsh weather, but they still face significant challenges. Without human intervention, finding food and shelter does become a daily struggle and harsh conditions can take a toll on their health. Domesticated horses are often provided with rugs in the winter to keep them warm and dry. They also benefit from the warmth and protection of stables and field shelters, which shield them from the elements. This care prevents the stress and health issues that wild horses face in extreme weather conditions. While wild horses rely on their natural adaptations to survive winter, domesticated horses benefit from additional human care, ensuring they stay comfortable and healthy during the colder months. So, as we can see, wild and domesticated horses really do lead significantly different lives both have their own set of challenges and, of course, benefits. Wild horses enjoy the freedom of vast open spaces and a life that mirrors their natural instincts, but they face really hard conditions and lack of medical care and correct injections that will keep them healthy. Domesticated horses, on the other hand, benefit from consistent care, including regular hoof trimming, veterinary attention and nutritional supplements. But some may suffer from confinement and lack of natural exercise. Understanding these differences helps us appreciate the unique needs and care that these magnificent creatures require. So thank you so much for coming on this journey to show the difference between wild and domesticated horses. I would love to read your comments in the comments section below and I make sure that I answer every single one of them.
Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and remember to subscribe so that you never miss one of my videos. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.